All right, uh, today I'm going to show you a video of this dashboard I created. The reason why I'm showing you a dashboard rather than just sharing a link is because this particular dashboard that I created is heavily animated. And so what I mean by that is um, I'm going to move this uh, slider back a little bit. It's data based on time, so when I animate it, we have three charts going at the same time based on time, right? And so um, the problem that I'm facing here is because I'm using the free desktop version, um, when I upload it onto Tableau's public server, you don't get this animation effect. It just it doesn't translate as well. And from what I understand is that it's a recent issue uh, and has more to do with this version 2020 than it has to do with uh, the limitation of a free license or perhaps their server. And so um, this is the online server version. This is the, the, the dashboard that, that's been uploaded. I'll pull back the, the slider to a few dates and I press play. And as you can see, it moves 18, 19, and then kind of just sputters. And this is more or less uh, what you see across most of the dashboards you upload. Sometimes they might work to perfection, sometimes they don't. Um, it's an issue that is well known within the Tableau community. Well, I won't say well known, but if you search for it, um, there, there's history of it, and in some of these threads, um, official Tableau accounts have responded saying that yeah, it's an issue with the latest version. So hopefully, uh, in the newest version, there'll they'll, they'll be a fix for it. But um, as for now, there isn't. And so, um, if you have something that's heavy on the animation, don't expect it to have the same effect once you upload it online. Um, if anything, what you can do if you are someone who wants to check it out still is you can download it. Uh, you can find the Tableau version and then just download it yourself offline and then just play it offline for yourself. And that should work. Um, it just won't look the same online. And um, if you wanted more details, you could. But uh, unfortunately, right now, Tableau community, they are migrating their entire forms to another service. So the past two days, it's been down. Uh, it's been done. It's been down. Uh, right now is the 29th, so it's been down since the 27th. All right, so let's go back to the dashboard. So like I said, uh, I created a dashboard that tracks COVID-19 cases in the US. I actually did this a few weeks ago for something very similar. The intent of that dashboard was to track county. Uh, this one is mostly for state. And the inspiration sort of the, or the seed for why I created this dashboard um, is pretty simple. Um, you know, lately we've been hearing a lot of Headlines saying, like, for example, you look at this article from The Guardian, um, half of U.S. states see a coronavirus surge as officials warn first wave far from over. Or maybe articles like this uh, from The Washington Post, Arizona, Florida, Texas are largest corona epicenters uh, in recent times. Um, articles like these, um, these, these are the ones that sort of inspired me to make the dashboard because in particular, the states that are being highlighted as epicenters, it's not just these two, there's like I think two more. Uh, I actually live in Arizona, so when I see articles like these and when I read through it, um, not when, but just like that time when I read it, it just kind of inspired me to go check out the data underlying um, what's being reported. Now, uh, that's not to say I don't believe these articles. I'm sure they're they're completely fine. It's just this is just ma matter of like just my own curiosity. Like I saw these things that affected me, and I was like, oh, cool. Why don't I just go look at the data and see see if I could uh, reproduce that and see what else I can what I can glean from it in building it in building this dashboard all right so um, some semantics um, the data set is from the New York Times github um, the tireless efforts of their team they've been gathering all these reports from different state departments and aggregating it into these very hand uh, handy CSV files um, you're free to use it as well I mean I'm not giving you permission it's New York Times but it's completely free it's free to the public um, so uh, that's where I got the data. My Tableau dashboard uh, has essentially three elements, uh, these three charts. There's a filter, uh, there's a highlighting function here. So when you click on a state, you'll highlight which uh, that state in the three elements. Uh, in particular, the state will only work on the bottom two if they show up. Um, so just keep that in mind. But um, the first element is simply a chart of total cases by total population. So if you look at something like New Jersey, they have a population of 100 um, of about 8.8 .8 million, and to date, uh, they have well, right now it's set to May 20th, but to date of May 20th, they have about 150,000 cases. So that's sort of how states are being populated here. And roughly, um, by creating a chart like this, what I'm trying to propose is that um, you know, if you look at the trend line, if you look at the 
the trend of the U.S. as a whole at that date, you might be able to kind of propose that, you know, as a state policymaker, um, if your state is below the, 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 the domestic average, you might be doing something right. Um, that said, uh, this whole thing has been really messy. Um, there's a lot of other things to consider, like, I don't know, the number of tests that your state has access to, your ability to process tests, or I don't know, some other things outside of your control. But um, it's, it's just a fun chart that might propose something like that. Um, for example, if you look at California, for, for a state with such a huge pop population, they have about almost 40 million. Uh, if they were trending along the, with the rest of the U.S., rather than have only 86,000 cases as of May 20th, they probably would have expected something closer to high 200s. Why that might not be the case? Um, once again, it could be for a lot of reasons, but maybe it's because out of all the states, California has been one of the most stringent. So, you know, it, it lends some evidence to maybe that, but like I said, it's, I think it's a very superficial chart. Um, it's just a fun thing to kind of look at. I think once you dive into the details, um, I think it becomes harder to conclusively say uh, this thing or that thing. So yeah, that's the first element. Uh, total cases uh, of positive uh, positive test results uh, by population. It's the states. Gives you an idea of whether they're doing good or not, depending on the line, their, their location relative to the line. Um, the second one is daily cases. This one in particular is for you to focus on specific states that you're interested in. Um, because if you look at this aggregate chart, it's a little messy. Um, yeah, you can highlight Montana to see it's there, but maybe you just want to see a little bit more detail. So you add whatever you want, it'll populate here, and then you can rewatch the time series if you'd like to sort of see that effect again, to sort of just see, just see how things are performing, right? The third element, the third chart element is top states by case by on that particular date. Um, it's the, the top 10, and so, on May 29th, California reported the most, about 2,900 cases, and so on and so forth. There's more data underlying it, but uh, for the sake of this dashboard, I only did top 10. Okay, So those are the three elements, uh, top 10 states by case by date, there you go, a uh, chart for you to focus in on, and then uh, a total chart of sort of how states are doing in terms of their total cases by population, whereas this is the case of that date. Okay, So this is really a chart that's good to track just how the state's doing on a daily, um, on a daily performance perspective. Okay. All right. Um, so we have this chart in front of us. Um, I kind of previewed previewed it to you before, but um, in its entirety, here's what it looks like. Starting from April first all the way to uh, June twenty sixth, which is the latest I pulled it at. There's more data before that, but honestly, it's a little boring and it it just yeah, it's, it's just not interesting. So I arbitrarily set at April first. And so this is what it looks like. Starting from April 1st, um, press play. These are the states I've selected. They're doing well. Sometimes they have a value, sometimes they don't. Um, that's because that date they don't have, they didn't report anything or it just it's just uh, formatting. It's just too close to each other. Um, so you're seeing a bunch of states. That's really good. Um, some states are rising a little higher than others. So there you go. So if you watch the general trend, it looks like everything's getting worse. Okay, that's cool. That's the takeaway from the dashboard. So let us go back to sort of what inspired me to make this dashboard to begin with. So like I was saying, um, we saw some pretty cool headlines. I, I, I mean, I, I use really cool loosely. Interesting, how about that? Um, interesting headlines saying that you know some states are seeing surges, OK? Um, this article in particular was of interest because, like I said before, I live in Arizona. And so um, why don't we begin by looking at those states? So Arizona, Florida, and Texas. According to this uh, article, uh, we are seeing outbreaks. So let's, why don't we take a look at what's happening there. So we'll go back here. Let's clear it this way. And we'll do Arizona, uh, Florida. Georgia is also up there too. Well, let's do Texas, all right? Okay, we'll go back. And so there's two things you can look at here. So I'll do this twice. So first one, I wanna just look at the general trends. I'm gonna highlight Arizona just cause it's more important to me. So that's Arizona right there. So we'll do this twice. So first time, over the course of the data set's time, it's April, Arizona is gaining, but more or less it's doing okay. Like we're doing, we're doing a good job. We're under the trend, okay? So I still don't see the article. Okay, May is coming around. We slightly pop up, but we're still good. Still don't see what the article's talking about. 
But as it continues going, you're seeing Arizona's rising a little bit quicker now. Like the rate of change is a little quicker. And then once we hit June, it really starts to pick up. So somewhere in June, it picks up. And then as we near the end, June 26th, it's now above the trend line. So the the article headline is saying, and, and also the body of the, the article, but I'm not going to read it, um, read it for you guys. Um, but it's saying Arizona is one of the states that have spiked. According to this, that seems to track. Um, for whatever reason, near the end of the month, it really peaked up. Um, if you let's do this again, but this time let's look at the ones that we focused on: Florida, Texas, Arizona, and I added Georgia. So let's let's do that again. These are daily cases, so pretty flat. Um, all the states seem to be doing well. So that's that's fine. Actually, you know what? This is kind of annoying. Uh, not this one. Daily cases. Let us show mark labels. Allow marks to overlap. There we go. Mm, that might be a little ugly. Yeah, that might be a little ugly. Let's take that away then. Okay. Uh, what? Um, worst case scenario, you just hover. It'll tell you what that number is. But okay, so let's continue. So they're doing fine. And then it looks like somewhere around June, they all just really get really bad. They all start spiking. Florida especially. Florida is the worst out of all of them, but Arizona also is up there. So we checked it twofold. Total case by date. Um, the state as a whole look visually looked like it was, I mean, they're both visual, but it, it seemed to go up, trend up pretty quickly. So something definitely is happening there. When we see daily cases, um, we're also seeing that spike around June. So something happened around June, early June or late May. Okay. And let's just look at top cases, top states by cases. So we're looking at early June, late May. So Arizona's not there, so let's look around. Do we have here? Oh, wait, no, Arizona's there. Oops. Uh, Arizona's top 10 around June 4th. And then it starts to make its way up the charts. So before June 4th, something happened. Now Arizona's still there, so let's... Okay, so May 29th, Arizona's not there. Arizona's still not there. Okay, so something happened in late May that caused Arizona's skyrocket. Now it's just a matter of Googling, all right? Just, I, what I did was I just Googled Arizona in May 25th or around that range. And what I ended up finding was this really useful, um, oh gosh, uh, I must have closed it. Well, uh, let's, let's try to find it. Um, State reopen. Okay, there you go. All right. So the next next step is just to look look at what's going on. And what I found was actually this this useful visualization by the New York Times, where you can select country or you can select the states, and it'll tell you what the reopening plan was. And if you click on this Arizona, what you'll find is actually around May fifteenth, their stay at home order expired. Okay. So maybe it was that. I mean, something happened around late May that caused things to spike. So that seems to track like. The stay home order expired, so let's see what Governor Doug Ducey did after May 15th. If you look up news articles around May 15th, essentially rather than close down the state again, he opted to let the stay at home order expire completely and let people go back out, um, I'll bet under some regulations. And so for example, if you look under here, you know, all right, fine, you guys can use pools again, but follow the certain guidances. Um, if you wanna use gyms, that's fine, follow the certain guidances. And these guidances are from the CDC or other uh, government departments. And so, you know, it's, I'm not gonna argue whether or not, you know, he did the right thing or wrong thing, but all I'm saying was May 15th expired, Doug Ducey, the governor of Arizona came out and said, we are not gonna renew it, we're gonna open things up, uh, but we're gonna open it in a controlled way and we're gonna follow policies and guidance uh, dictated by the CDC, okay? So given that, um, given that they reopened at May 15th and things spiked after that, what most likely happened was that people just started going outside and either the guidance wasn't enough or just people didn't care. And that's most likely what happened to these, that's most likely why these things spiked, all right? So, um, so yeah, uh, I mean, these are some things that you can use to confirm, like the article initially said, uh, 
These are the ones that are spiking. We looked at the data. Yep, that's true. The underlying data says that it is indeed spiking. Why is it spiking? Uh, you know, this article in particular talks. Uh, oh, not this one. It must have been another one. Um, th yeah, this was just an app. This is just a quick summary of just how they're spiking. Um, some of them talk about, uh, you know, in absence of data, but basically they they also come to the same conclusion that like it's just because people just kind of forgot about Corona, if you will, and just went out and started living life as normal, and so that's. You know, I, I think both of them sort of run parallel with each other. So neat little thing that you can do with this. Um, one other thing that was kind of neat is there's also this article saying that only two states are reporting a decline in coronavirus cases. These cases are Connecticut and Rhode Island. So, of course, what I did was, all right, let's go check it out. Let's do Connecticut and Rhode Island. And let's just pick Colorado as an example. All right, so those are your colors. Um, if it's ever, the problem with this is usually you want to pick colors that are a little bit more, that stick out more, but we have so many different um, states that uh, the colors are all pretty close, unfortunately. So, so okay, at, you know, if you move the slider all the way to June 26th, the latest of the data, you can already tell that most of them are indeed uh, trending downwards. Actually, I'm going to remove um, Colorado just because it's taking away from the chart, but... <clears throat> If you can see for uh, Connecticut, uh, so let's see, Connecticut is the is this one, and then Rhode Island is uh, pink. Uh, they are indeed trending downwards. So if we play it out here, you can see that flat, 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 and yeah, they just keep going down. So uh, article is correct. Rhode Island and uh, Connecticut is doing a good job, whatever they're doing over there. Um, <clears throat> let's see how California is doing. For California is trending upwards, so so yeah, probably uh, part of the batch of half the U.S. sees a Corona surge. So so yeah, um, sorry to kind of tail off there, but um, you know, long long story short, um, this is this is the dashboard I created, um, inspired by some of these these articles that we've been seeing the past few weeks, uh, not past few, but the past week, and then here's the actual data that goes to support it. So just a neat little exercise, I guess, for me to just build the dashboard and sort of confirm what we're, we're seeing. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you, uh, feel free to click on the link uh, that I'm going to post. Um, I think it'll be best if you download it back down onto your desktop and load it there. Chances are the uh, online server is not going to be pretty. But um, yeah, thanks for listening.